Hello, welcome to Minute Realms. My name is Stuart, and this video is all about how I converted this beast. So I wanted to achieve a real centerpiece for my army, and as much as I love the old school sculpts, the old Lewin Leoncourt was just a little bit too small, as was his sort of fourth, fifth edition later sculpt as well. As much as I like that second sculpt, it is still very, very old, and I wanted something that was a little bit more in line with the, the newer plastics. <laughs> and I say newer plastics, the thing I keep drawing my eye to was the old Carl Franz on Griffin model. Now, I'd never owned that sculpt when I had an Empire army before the end times, but I something that's sort of been on my shopping list for a while, and I thought, hmm, maybe I can make some kind of conversion from that. But there's one minor issue. He's on a Griffin, and the Bretonian Lord needs to be on a Hippogriff. Now, the griffin is a legendary creature with a body, tail, and back legs of a lion. Now, he looks like a tiger the way the GW griffin model is painted there. But he has a head and wings of an eagle, and it sometimes has eagle's talons as its front feet. The hippogriff, on the other hand, is a legendary creature with the front half of an eagle and the hind half of a horse. Here's a young Luen Leoncourt meeting his hippogriff Buckbeak for the first time. Uh, sorry, not Buckbeak. It's Beakwee. Yes, Beakwee. Beaky. GW called it Beaky. So, could I manage a crazy conversion? All I needed was to swap out that lion's posterior for an ass. Well, the back end of a horse. So I ordered the Free Guild General on Griffin, that model that used to be Carl Franz on Griffin in the world that was. Now I just needed that big horse butt, and the model is huge. A normal size horse just wasn't going to cut it. Searched about on the GW site and asked my good friend Dan, who you can catch with me on the Hobby Hour podcast that's hosted on this channel, and he came up with a winner, Kragnos. <laughs> now I wasn't going to spend £105 just to get his bum, so I decided to search eBay in the vain hope that I would find something. I didn't really expect to find anything and was all ready to search all the bit sites and start messaging people when one sprung up. Just the legs and posterior and a couple of other bits, not even a horse's tail, that would have cost me an extra 20 odd quid on top. This was still pricey, I won't bother sharing with you how much it was, but it wasn't £105. So I had all my bits and it was time to get started on the build. I decided the simplest way to build the miniature was to focus on the, the griffin side of things first and build it and then saw off what I didn't need. So I had a really good read through the instructions first just to kind of work out the stages. I didn't want to build anything I really didn't need, um, but I wanted to build enough that it was stable enough when I removed it that I would cut in the right place and not have strange bits that I needed a part assemble afterwards. I tested out my Kragnos bits and they seemed absolutely perfect. I was really, really chuffed with the way this might work out. Thank you, Dan. And I rummaged through my bits and found a few other things I'd need later on for the rider, the Brett Lord himself. Now, there are many builds for this. As I already mentioned, you could build it as Carl Franz back in the day. You can build it as an Empire General, as a Mage, and there's a couple of different head options as well on the Griffin. I wanted one of the, the standard head options. I did want to use a little bit of the armor, but just the pressed armor. But other than that, I kept it fairly standard. And for that chest armor, I set about filing away all of the extra sort of filigree and stuff on there. I didn't want it to look like a, an Empire Griffin after all. I wanted some space to add some heraldry and things later on when it came to painting. While I was waiting for it to dry, I started to work on the Kragnos bits, and that was mostly clipping away all the weird horns and, and chaosy bits. And there's quite a lot of hiding of that stuff to do, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. But with the two main parts assembled, I was happy with the size and the way it was going to work. Now to get cutting. So I picked a line and just went straight to it and, and cut through the Griffin model and then did the same on the back half of Kragnos. So having looked at a quick dry fit, I was pretty happy the way it was going together. So I set about gluing the two halves. Now I used lots and lots of plastic glue here and left it overnight to dry fully. 
The next day, that glue had obviously fully dried, the plastic glue melting the two parts together, which gave me a really, really strong bond to work with. I could have super glued it and got to work straight away, but it was late and I knew that plastic glue would actually give me a stronger bond with the amount I put on it. So the next stage was about building a saddle. I'd cut away the Empire themed one, meaning I'd need to make one which was a little bit of extra work, but it would look less and less like a Empire model and more and more like a Britannian one. So those of you who are familiar with Forge World models will know they come on these little sort of gates um, and they had sort of little chunks of resin which has the Forge World logo on etc and then the, the miniature is then stuck to that. So I had one of these, a small one, and I trimmed it down and I used it as the basis for the saddle. So all glued in place with a little dry fit to work out so that the rider's legs were going to sit on there fine. So now it was time to build the rest of the plastic miniature, clean off any more chaosy bits and basically prepare myself for the big green stuffing session that was required to re-sculpt that stomach and midriff. Now I'm a long way from being a very good sculptor or green stuff worker but I was confident that I could do enough of a job to make this miniature still look cool. I started by working on the saddle. I filled in the area over the top of the shield, which I used basically as an armature for, for the seated staff. And the plan was to make it look like a leather seat. Once I'd smoothed it on top and got the basic shape, I started to carve in some sort of padded leather bits. Um, and it looks a little bit like a tortoise. Yeah, it looks like he's sitting on a tortoise. Hopefully not so much when he's been painted. Then came the main job of filling in that midriff area. This was a fairly slow process, but using rubber clay shapers it helped remove fingerprints and things. And I kept licking my, my fingers and thumbs as I was doing it. And I eventually got a shape that I was pretty happy with. The next part of green stuffing was to work out how to do a tail of a horse. And if you remember, I said that to buy Kragnos's tail, I've had to have spent another 20 odd pounds, which would seem ridiculous. So um, I look back through my Griffin model and the lion's tail has got quite a lot of hair at the end. So I trimmed off the long part and realized that I could shove it into the hole at the back. So I filled in that hole with a bit of green stuff and then blended in the hair a little bit more to make it sort of a bit fuller at the top. And hey, presto, we've got something that resembles a horse's tail. And I said about adding in the wings and the main part of the build was done. The griffin was finished. And next up, the job was to build the Lord himself. I'd already decided I was going to use the Knight of the Realm plastic legs while they're just a standard rank and file miniature. They are still Bretonians rather than using pure Empire stuff from the other sprue. So the legs were sorted. At this point, I did head back to that Empire Griffin sprue and decided that the, the best way to get a nice sort of full plate armor that looked more ornate was to use the body of Karl Franz. Um, but I hoped that I would do enough other conversions to make it not look like Karl Franz that was still on there. So I cut him off at the waist. I really wanted to make use of the arm that was holding the lance in the air, but I wanted to kind of convert it a little bit. And that arm didn't have full plate, so I decided to play around and see what I could do. So I cut the lance off just above the hand and then I used Karl Franz's hand which he's holding Galmaraz and he used that as the base of the lance making it look longer. So you've got the handle of Galmaraz and the armoured hand and then you've got the, the lance of what would have been the Empire General. Carl Franz's body glued on the Knight of the Realm legs actually looks pretty cool and it works really well. The full plate armour seems to blend in with the armour that's already there, so I think we're on to a winner, especially with a good head swap. I also modelled a fresh sword with him. The one that was on the Knight of the Realm legs was a little bit short and it also sort of got into the side of the wings of the Griffin and didn't work. So I modelled one from the Empire General but used the hilt of one of the Bretonian swords and then just green stuffed the side of the leg a little bit where I had to cut away the old one. One Stormcast head later, and I think we have the perfect set of armour. I carved away the lion head motifs that were on the shoulder pads themselves and smoothed them down. And I think he will pass quite well as a Bretonian one's painted up. So I fashioned some reins out of some foil packaging and that was it, ready for some paint. So prime black as usual and then went for a nice Zenithor highlight followed by a dry brush to really pick out that detail. 
Now this isn't intended to be a full painting tutorial as I would with some of my others. So I'm gonna whiz through the stages here, but I started layering down some airbrush colors for the basic sort of skin and flesh of the horse end using my airbrush. Using a wide range of yellows and browns from the contrast, the express color and army paint to speed paint ranges. Wanted to do as much with the airbrush as I could at early stages to really save the time. This wasn't going to be a display miniature, it's a gaming miniature, but I want it to look pretty cool, so it's about finding that balance. You can see me here just edging in some orange on the talons there, and I didn't want to get too close and have any overspray onto the feathers. I wanted the feathers to have three stages of colour, from white to a sort of a yellow to a darker brown. I reinforced the white using some white ink. With the airbrush layers down, it was time to crack out the hairy brush and I started filling in the areas of hair. I was using Black Legion for this because of that nice warm brownish tone that it has to the black and just complements the choice of sort of orangey tan color for the horse that I went for. I used a thin Templar white just to add the shading on the feathers. You could use the, the, the Citadel version, you could use the Army Painter version as well. Any of them will do, they essentially add a bit of a, a grey glaze. Then I started adding in some more shadow and detail, so that pre-highlight of Zenithal and dry brush had really, really worked well with the base layer, so I had a really nice effect um, on most of the miniature. So rather than highlighting straight away, I went back in and reinforced the shadow areas and added some warmth here with some oranges and yellows from the Citadel Contrast range. I picked out a few more details, painted in some leather straps and things, and I set about hitting the miniature with a matte varnish to really seal in all those contrast layers. Now, I had a little joke with my friend Dan about this, but there was no way I was going to individually highlight all those feathers, so I set about dry brushing them all to really kind of pick out that detail, and it was a white dry brush over the white parts of the feathers, and then a, a yellow colour over the, the mid-tones, and then a brown over the other parts, just to really, really kind of blend it and pick them out. I'm using the Artist Opus dry brushes here, but there are quite a few companies that are doing similar style now. They are really, really good, give you nice sort of subtle control with your dry brushing. And the plan is also to go back and glaze over the top of these and really tone down though that sort of that drier looking effect. Here I begin those glazes, starting with a thin down wildwood, I believe this was, to just go back over the hair areas on the horse, or the tail and the hair that's on the horse's legs. And it just really tones back that dry brush and gives you a really, really nice effect. And it's far quicker than individually highlighting all of those horse hairs. And then essentially the same thing on all of these feathers, building it up layer by layer, taking my time. It's a really cathartic process there, it's really, really nice. So thin layers of brown contrast over the darker feathers. You can use wildwood or Garagax sewer or something like that. And I believe it was Agarash dunes on the sort of more yellowy tan color feathers. And even some skeleton horde in places and just sort of taking my time going around, making sure that I'm blending it out nicely, adding water to thin it and feather it out and really just tone back that dry brush and the effect is really, really cool. I even went a little brighter in places, so this is a and yellow, it just adds a little bit of warmth and a little bit of variation to the tone. While that was all drying, I set to work on painting the Lord. Now I used the same scheme and I've used on my Knights of the Realm, so I will keep this even briefer. But if you want to go and see the colour schemes and techniques I've been using, please do go and check out my Knights of the Realm tutorial. And that is a proper tutorial where I take you through stage by stage and tell you exactly which colour I'm using at each time. Using my favourite skin method at the moment, Shamelessly Stolen from Juan Hidalgo Miniatures. He was testing these and doing some early videos before they were released and he did a great job on an ogre and I've been using the skin recipe ever since. It works only if you're, you've primed him white or a zenithal. 
using dwarf skin, deep purple and gloomy violet. You obviously use the dwarf skin as the base of it. The the deep purple is a kind of reddish, warmish tone. I'm going to use that on the cheekbones and nose and things, and then just add a few shadows with the gloomy violet, and it's just perfect. decided to give him a sort of a white hair I wanted him to be a little bit older so I, I used the same white method as I did on the feathers and then you can see I'm just sort of painting in some of the other base areas before we get to the armor now I did get the hairy brush out to paint in some of the feathers around the face of the hippogriff itself I really wanted to make those stand out and, and I couldn't really dry brush to the effect that I wanted to in that area and it's definitely going to be a focal point. Then I said about getting the metals down. Now, I'm going to preach to you about how good scale 75 or scale colour metallics are. And I think if you uh, only buy three from the extensive range of metallic paints, I would go for decayed metal, which is this sort of brown colour, coppery colour you see going on. Um, I'd go for black metal which is this really, really dark kind of almost um, chain mail-ish kind of, of metal. Um, and then also Necro Gold, which is a really dull, desaturated gold. And then maybe add, if you want a fourth, Elven Gold as well. I use those to sort of work on most of the miniatures I paint. The reason I've started with the decayed metal is I'll almost completely cover that with the black metal later on, but it just provides this really, really nice base so that when you um, highlight later on the metal just looks like it's got more depth to it and when you weather it it really kind of brings it out so the black metal goes on almost completely covering the decayed metal but i just leave a little bit of it in the recesses and things as i said it really helps to build to that tone and it's also a really nice base layer for gold Using the same methods on the Lord's armour as well as on the armour that was on the front of the Hippogriff. And then using a bit of Game Air Silver to add those highlights. And at the moment I'm sort of doing a mixture of overbrushing and almost a little bit of blending in. But I'll tone this back later with some oil washes. While those metals were drying it was back to picking out a few more details. So I've got the yellows out just to add a few more sort of highlights and, and, and touches to the talons just to really make them pop. You'll see I've used the same colours on the beak and on the yellow side of the shield and now I am just rimming around the edge of the shield with the base layer of Necro Gold. Using the same gold on the Lance for the Lord then highlighting further with Elven Gold. Back to more details when that's drying, so just tidying up the talons, adding a little bit of detail there. Now on to highlighting those blue areas on the shields and on the cloth on the Lord. Now remember, if you want to see a full tutorial on those, do check out the Knights of the Realm tutorial. Now here I am applying an oil wash. This is soil works from Scale 75 and this is grease. And I'm applying it straight to the metallic areas and I haven't sealed them. A little bit risky, but these metallics are fairly robust. Applying them to the armor of the knight as well. I want this to look really gritty and realistic. Once they're dry, I tidy them up with a little bit of white spirit, ready to highlight afterwards. Lots of sponge chipping with Game Air Silver on that metal plate on the front of the Hippogriff. Adding a few dabs of Rhinox Hide as well. This stage I was adding decals to the front of that armour. I've been using the leftover Templar parts from the Imperial Fists or Heresy sheet that I've had. Again, I'll talk about that a little bit more in my Britannian Army video, so do check that one out. I do have a handy video about how I apply decals, so I won't bore you with those information here, but I will pop a little link in. 
A few more highlights to the blue on the Lord himself. And while that was drying, I set about adding a little bit of blood and gore to the griffin. So there's lots of little pock marks and cuts and things. It was nice to play with blood for the blood god and fill those in with little bits of, of running blood and things as well. This is Warhammer. I like to play with blood effects where I can. Um, and I think with a beast of this size and in battle, there would be all kinds of missiles thrown or shot at it. So I expect like kind of all little nicks and scratches and things. And it really kind of adds that grim dark feel to it. So switching backwards and forwards here between beast and rider while certain paints dry. And here I am highlighting the yellow areas on the clothing of the Lord. With those oils now fully dry, I can really tidy up and touch up the armour and really get that shine effect to it. So we're getting quite close to the end now. We're highlighting the hair with model air white, nice smooth consistency. just adding a subtle highlight to the flesh areas using a thinned basic flesh from model color we are pretty much done there just waiting for a bigger base to arrive through the post now I've gone with the smallest base I possibly could. I have no idea what the size is going to be for the old world. I think the, the sort of standard um, Pegasus Knights and, and Hippogriff size, even at 6th edition, was only a 40 by 40 square base. Now this is a 100 by 60 base. Those back legs, those Kragos legs are quite well spread at the back, which makes it a, a little bit harder to fit on anything thinner. So we will see, but I don't think I can get on anything smaller. So it is what it is. So just adding a few little extra details on the base to really kind of tie it into the army. I've added some of this fencing to my peasant bowman. And it just really sort of ties the army in and also provides some scale to the miniature. Now this is actually from the Rohan plastic kit. Um, some nice little extras you get in those sets. Now some Vallejo earth texture, dark earth. This just fills in the rest of the base. A few bits of kitty litter to add some extra rocks. Some Agrax Earth Shade on the base texture once it was dry. Some thin black lotus express colour over the kitty litter rocks and over the, the main rocks at the front of the base. And brushed on some dry pigments onto the rocks and onto the earth texture as well. I prefer this to, to dry brushing, makes it a little bit, a bit more like a diorama effect rather than a miniature. And it's just super simple and easy. Blow away the excess and that's all that's needed. Now for some tufts from wall paint figures. They're a company based in the UK. Excellent service and Stuart's a really excellent guy. He actually sent me a freebie. So if you're watching this, thank you very much, Stuart. And I'm using a mixture here of some two millimeter tufts and some, some more sort of irregular six millimeter longer grass tufts. A little bit of Vallejo thick mud, European mud effect, just to make the earth look like it's been churned up. And yes, you've guessed it, some more blood effects just splattered around on the ground or, or where the talons have had blood on or there's a wound or something where it may have dripped down. He's finished with a nice black rim and we're done. Now I had loads of fun doing this. It was something very, very different to what I normally do. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Has the conversion worked? Have I done a good enough job of it? As I said, I'm not really an expert sculptor or modeler, but this is uh, more of a conversion that I could cover the uh, offending damaged parts where I cut it in half with a bit of green stuff. And I, I think, I think it does the job fairly well. 
Does the Lord himself look suitably Bretonian? Let me know what you think. I, I think it does. I think it, it, it does enough. I appreciate from some angles you may recognise the Empire parts and the little bit of lore that I've been working on for my army with them set in the Border Princes. We'll have some links to Empire anyway, um, but I think that uh, overall I think there's enough Bretonian sort of stuff on there to, to make it uh, a suitable um, leader for my army. Love to hear of any conversions you've done like this or anything you've got planned in the future, maybe something for up and coming the old world armies or just maybe for existing fantasy armies. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider giving me a like. It helps other people see the video and lets me know that I'm doing a good job. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Would you like to see more videos like this? I've definitely got lots of other the old world themed videos coming up. Lots more painting tutorials. So let me know what you'd like to see. But all in all, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I will catch you soon.